Alright everyone, hello and welcome back to Watching Wolford, the weekly podcast where we discuss storylines from week 20 of 2023. We're going to be reviewing the 20th of week 2023, as I just said, with the episodes ranging from the 15th of the 5th, 2023, to the 18th of the 5th, 2023. So 2023 Actually, like hold on. Time. Actually, hold on. It was the 18th in, um, in England and the 19th in Ireland. So, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and on today's episode, we are going to be discussing the, the main pivotal storylines of the week the storylines that received the main focus uh and in the order we're going to do them in are stacy's money troubles continuing uh she's continued to look towards secret cam uh some bailiffs have started taking stuff from the slater house and she kind of struggles to figure out what she's gonna do to get out of this little rut so that is the first topic we'll be going into next will be another discussion about elaine peacock and the somewhat frosty reception she's received uh, both online and in the square as there's been some issues with Linda this week there's been some issues with Alfie and a bit of you know it's the character hasn't been all lovely and happy she's she, she's definitely had a fair amount of bite to her and mm. the final two segments you will be talking about will be the Lola uh, Lola's cancer treatment has stopped working, which then leads into the two-hander uh, Margate episode, which is just Jay and Lola, and possibly episode of the year. And at some point in the middle... It will win an award. It, sh- it will. It will definitely win an award at Soap Awards. And at some point in the middle, <laughs> we're going to talk about how our weeks have been, Piggy's going to review Fast 10, and is there anything else? And just one thing else to announce, Uh, obviously, unless uh, this is going to be slightly spoilerific, so if you want to avoid the spoilers, like, mute it for about 10, 20 seconds. Um, As on the 31st of the month, 31st of May, uh, starting at 7.15, we will be reacting to Lola's final episode live on the Watching Wolf YouTube channel. So if you want to see how we respond, my lovely little face will be in the in the, it'll be in the lovely little screen, um, and Piggy will be on voice. So if you want to see how we respond to it, obvious. I mean, honestly, the the Lola storyline has hit much harder than I imagine both of us would have expected. Mm-hmm. So it'll be pretty nice to see it how it wraps up. And I'm not saying it's. Pro- I'm probably gonna cry. But I nearly cried at the end of this week's episodes. So when she actually dies, you know, shit might go down. <laughs> You're just going to have me, like, crying off camera. And then on camera, you know, like, Ric Flair, he says, I have a tear in my eye. Yeah. Just, That'll just, just be you. Just, yeah. Just blading and crying at the same time. Just cutting yourself in it. <laughs> She's dead. Yep. She's dead. Probably the first and then, and time then, I've cried online. And then we'll have Reddick on. Finally, she's fucking dead. <laughs> Let's go. And, uh, then, and then we'll be the reasonable ones going, lads, indeed. you do realise this has to be built up. You can't just have her die straight away. You need to build her up. Exactly. Like You, you can't skip to the finale if you can't start the show. <laughs> It's like people who go, I watch Breaking Bad in reverse. I start at season five and then go back to season one. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's like what? <laughs> it's just unreasonable, is it? But regardless, uh, our lovely little tangents will happen in the middle of the podcast. But for now, let's get started with the initial topic, that being Stacy's money issues. So this week, obviously, Stacy has been struggling a lot over the last couple of months. Uh, Ryan Malloy obviously cut Lily's like child support dramatically, as uh, she she didn't let Lily go live with him. Not really a surprise, but ultimately, he was trying to take Lily's unborn child. 
<laughs> you can't, you can't bagsy a child. I'll be honest, lads. That's not how it's well, supposed you could. to work. You could, you could walk into the hospital and be like, but "Don't like that one. He's a bit Caucasian. Don't like that one. He's a bit black. Don't like that one. He's Asian." I'll take the Chinese one, thanks. Oh, that's that's reasonable. Um, but yeah, in this week it mostly kicked off as uh, I believe it was Stacy kind of ran to Martin, just like, "Ah, oh, the bailiffs are taking stuff. The Slaters, uh, like, just had all their stuff nicked, as obviously they can't pay the bills." Uh, this kind of continued with Stacy just refusing to let anybody help. Um, a fun little aside is that they decide to start selling naked burgers. Now, Piggy, you like your food. How mm -hmm. fucking miserable does a burger in between two bits of lettuce sound? Right, so let me get this right. The burger, the, the bun there, or whatever it's called, the meat patty, is going to still be fried, isn't it? Or however you do it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So there's still going to be grease on the lettuce. So you're essentially eating a greasy, a greasy lettuce. Hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, to, dig to digest this, right? People who want to know this, right? So I don't understand how healthy this is because the lettuce on top, on the outside, would be fine. But on the inside, like the bit that's like on top of the burger will be covered in grease or red sauce so it's not going to taste nice the bottom bit that's holding it is going to also be covered in grease which means you can't like, like it's it's just going to be greasy but with two pieces of lettuce like i don't know how to digest it if you want a healthy option then maybe do a vegan option where you can get some of them vegan burgers that Burger King do, a McDonald's do, the Mac plant. Exactly. Because I think that would be more healthy. I mean, to be instead fair. Instead of skin. I will just yeah. say, this was a cost of living expense, and it wasn't them trying to do a healthy option. <laughs> this was them going, yeah. ah, we can't afford buns. Bollocks. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh... Depends how expensive. If, if they're giving me that, like, for a quid, I'd be like, yeah, sure. For a quid, I would, but if it's like, I want, I want to charge you four pounds. Like, I mean, to be fair, judging Stacy's prices, they are ridiculously low. It's like, oh, yeah, you want, you, you, you want a nice little, like, bacon bat for, like, 150 Yeah! <laughs> Go on, then. But if she's charging four quid, I'd be like, love. Just like your secret cam, shove that up your fucking hole. <laughs> and yeah, so speaking of secret cam, obviously she's been eyeing up the offers. Um, a buyer has been like, listen, right, you show me your face, I'll pay double. And she's considering it, she's considering it. She, she gets a corset from the market and this kind of results in Whitney telling Eve that she bought a corset. And Eve's like, oh, is there a new man? But Stacy's like, nah. Nah, I just got to feed my family, mate. <laughs> I think one, th one interesting idea I saw is people... Because obviously doing like OnlyFans and secret cam stuff, that's... At this point, it's not really a... I don't, I'm, I'm thinking of the word embarrassing, but it's not really like a shameful thing to do no. at this point. Especially during because... lockdown, because so many people like just built this amazing like career for themselves by just taking off their kit and like delivering it to an audience. See, it's not, you don't even have to look, because as we can tell, Stacey's not going full nude with it. You can still do safe for work um, only fans and Patreon and Chatterbait and stuff like that. Like, you no longer have to take off your clothes. You can just sell it by doing loot, which yeah. is... You know, Suggestive. Yes, but the way they're going about it is like, Stacey is literally taking out her tits and whapping them around. <laughs> She's not. She's, she's literally just taking nude photographs that like you can post on Instagram. Yeah. Like it's like it's not embarrassing. If you're shoving a six foot dildo up her hole, I'm all be huge. Then like yes, okay, now we bring that into question. Now we question it. 
But like, I was just doing is taking off her little robe and showing a bit of skin. You know, like, it's not that horrible. Yeah, but I guess... we're going about it like it's a black plague. Yeah, I guess... I well... understand she's a mom. Yeah. I think it's because it's I coming understand. out of desperation. Yeah. You're not putting in the work. Like, if that was Ash, <laughs> Ash would go the full hog. I'm telling you, he would. He'd go the full hog. He'd make sure all his fans are paid for. Exactly. Like, he'd do anything you ask him. It, well, except Brocky get pissed on or vomit. Probably wouldn't do that, but ah, well. I say anything else. <laughs> you is never know. All right. <laughs> That's all. That's all. Yeah, someone. Right. Someone, someone's like, I want you to farm it into a bucket and eat it. And then you're like, oh, mm, no. <laughs> Jesus. No. But there would be someone who would enjoy that. <laughs> Very true. And suppose... we're not shaming you. No. You just think it's fucking wrong. <laughs> um, and I suppose this also echoed at some point during the scenes. Uh, Martin was like kind of trying to help out. Uh, this then resulted in... Stacy getting a phone call from the school as they're suggesting that Lily's been making fun of someone and like bullying them. And obviously they ask her and it turns out that, you know, she just wanted to take the attention away from her. So she leaked out a picture and also said, oh, well, she's 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 taking her kit off and that, that's really slaggy, isn't it? Um, hey, wait, 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 was this child being nude? I, I don't know. It was very, it was very strange. Because aren't because, they still because, 12? Yes. Because yes. my problem is if she's... And we all, like, I'm not saying, yeah, if she's in her brand, Nickers, it's all right. But if you're saying it was a full-on nude... I don't think Prince so. Andrew's having a field day. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... Because not only, not only is that wrong, you are breaking the law because that is child pornography. No, exactly. no. If Jimmy Savile was alive, and he, since he worked with the BBC, Jimmy Savile would want that picture. But uh, like, I, I, whoever wrote this, I want to know what picture. Uh, was it a nude? Was it a lewd? I understand I it's think... a child, but I need to know for context. It's just because that... <laughs> it's that funny dissonance because I need to know. obviously. Obviously, Lily's been aged up, you know, like she's no, she, she's 12 in storyline, but she's basically like 15 the way they write her and get her character to act. So it makes sense if they were like 15, 16, but they're still 12, so it's a little bit weird. But regardless, um, this puts a bit of pressure because Stacy feels more ashamed because, you know, ah, oh, even Lily would be ashamed. Um, and this kind of leads to Stacy opening up to Martin and kind of talking like, would you support me even if... I don't know if she actually openly said what she was doing, but definitely like tried to get some of his help. And even in the end, we do see Stacy Slater in full lingerie, which was... I'm just going to be honest, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um... I bet you if this was past Watershed, it would be a lot more. It's just, honestly, when they do these sorts of storylines, I was in, I was expecting that they're, they're gonna be implied. So I don't know if this is like some like empowerment thing, and you know, I, I, I hope that she's comfortable doing it, and you know, I hope this, I hope this could like be good for confidence, you know. But I suppose that that's the that's the state that the money issues are in for the Slaters. Uh, Stacy's not really not really trying to get help from anyone, um, and is ultimately just causing herself more problems by just kind of plunging herself deeper into the secret camp stuff. I I don't really know where this storyline's well. going. It does. It it should do. I don't know. I think. Well, I know. I know where this storyline goes, but I don't know if I can say it because it's spoilery. Even though it happens this week. Yeah. So, because if you follow the Watching Wild for an Instagram account, you will know that I follow some spoilery people. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a Watching Wild for an Instagram account. Go follow over there. Yeah. 
Yeah, we only have one follower, but you know. We'll and it's on. me. <laughs> it's fucking me. The best person <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, I suppose the main discussion. I guess we've had the bulk of the discussion. How it does kind of come across as shameful. Um, she. I appreciate. It I appreciate. I suppose. Yeah, you carry on. I'll. I'll wrap it all around with my next one. Because how I view it, if you're just doing it for the money, I understand a lot of OnlyFans creators, because I'm not going to say secret cans. We know it's supposed to be OnlyFans. They just couldn't get the sponsorship because I don't think OnlyFans would be like, hold on here. No. I mean, but, yeah, why would you sponsor a pre-watershed program? <laughs> exactly. Um, I understand a lot of OnlyFans do for the money but what i'm saying is if you're just doing for the money and not putting in the work if you're half arsing it then what's the point at least the, the creators on only fans are like i understand half my following are perverts i will put in the work you know what i mean like yeah, stacy is just going all right i'm gonna whap up me backs there's a photo taken whap that on nine yeah. 50 pound done where is the sexy footage? Like, <laughs> for fuck's sake, you're, you're just taking a picture of your backs. Yeah, yeah. I, she, she probably could, could do be that. doing a lot better than she's actually, like, trying. Like, I want full-on fanboy fucking new videos. Do... Oh, you... What would you do in a reality where they just decided to make Stacey rich because her OnlyFans has been really successful? Like, I would laugh. That would be hilarious. Like she just suddenly gets to like buy a shop or something and now she's actually like raking in the money. It's like when Janine was rich because I don't remember why she was rich, uh, but she just won a lot of money. And at the time she was genuinely like eating some dog food and actually suddenly rich. Like maybe she had some like windfall due to Frank. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it would be it would be a funny turn, but obviously they're trying to they're trying to uh, portray this cost of living crisis and it's hard for everyone. So obviously that's not going to happen. Would be funny, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then for the king's coronation, they went, oh, oh, everyone loves the king, and you're like, mate, you're doing this desperate storyline, and then you're supposed to bring on this king's coronation bullshit. <laughs> but yeah, um. Yeah, no, I th I, to be fair, I think that fundamentally wraps up the storyline. Uh, this is obviously going to continue and continue deep into the year, probably even further on. Um, and we can probably expect to see either Nish or Ravi get involved somehow and cause oh. some more problems. Caught bear action. That's what, the, that's what Ravi's called, isn't he? He's a bear. Uh... I guess. He looks so bit, I can picture it now short. on the secret cans. What? I said he looks a bit short. Bear. I can picture it now on the secret cans. Bear fox milf. <laughs> now that's marketing right there. Five, and I suppose just like, just like that joke got a pretty frosty reception. Just like another character on the square who's recently re-debuted, Elaine, Peacock, and her initial struggles of getting used to being on the square. Can we get can we go to Reddit first? Um and see what they say. <laughs> and then we'll give our thoughts. I mean we can yeah, we, we can go to Reddit. Uh, obviously, Reddit has kind of become a, a bit of a running character on the show, uh, as it's like it's a very love-hate dynamic. I love to see the shit opinions <laughs> that Reddit has about EastEnders and the amount of delusional people that are on there, but it also does bring me some joy very occasionally. The reception to Elaine Peacock's entrance has been pretty mired uh, because ultimately people are just like, well, she's just like Peggy 2.0. She's nothing like the old actress. It's like, and then good old our friend talking Wolford actually went, hey, have you guys actually watched any of initial Elaine Peacock? 
you do realize she did have a similar amount of bite and like a similar like slightly weird sense of humor right and people went oh 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 well i don't like her anyways <laughs> come on and obviously it's just it's it's a very annoying state of being because i've seen it with so many like other because since i've been a soap fan for years i've seen it with so many different characters so many characters who start off they have to be a bit of a dick to get any main story time so that they're a dick they mess up a pre-established thing then people go i don't like her she's shit and then oh who's your favorite character now it's them because <laughs> they've gotten the best storyline this year and they were ready for it um mm -hmm. like ha ah, who who even i mean i mean reese recently got his breakthrough storyline obviously um Eve actually main... fun fact, i had mm -hmm. a dream about reese what <laughs> yeah i i had a dream about him uh what what was happening in this dream basically sonya was by was my, my brother-in-law i think okay. and then reese was like my stepdaddy and <laughs> basically and and basically he said some facts and then we went to see his wife his wife died julius dean played nice, we nice. Got, and then we had ice cream on a beach <laughs> And he was in a pair of khakis. Oh, oh yes, boys. Um, but yeah, um, and obviously the one... I I don't even... The main issue is I don't have a current EastEnders example of a character who's come in, had a frosty reception, and then been liked. I guess you, Nah, I, I'll go with Chelsea, because Chelsea's finally been given the time to actually be a decent enough character rather than just be abused. Um, if you know Coronation Street... Any fans watching? Obviously, Day, uh, Daisy Midgley uh, came in. Bit of a bitch. People thought she was like Tracy Barlow, who's, you know, one of the, like, famous soap cows type deal. Um, but now she's getting a really, like, interesting storyline. And now people, people are just like, you know what? I actually like her now. She actually fits in. I like her for the key personality things that they had initially. And that's what I feel is going to happen to Lane Peacock. But what did she do this week? Well, she kind of struggled to see eye to eye with Linda. She wants to make all these overarching changes, how the pub runs, moving where the crisp boxes are, and even cutting one of Piggy's favorite characters from the workforce. <laughs> I'm crying. How could they? Alfie, you were tied with the writers. Why would they cut you? <laughs> but yeah obviously uh she's been kind of posturing and she's decided that alfie's a bit useless and doesn't really fit the new look of the bar um which was a little bit strange because this week they decided to make alfie the clumsiest barman he's ever been <laughs> like he's never fallen over at any other point but this week he's been cocking up beyond any real belief it's ridiculous the like what i don't understand is he'd be a perfect fifth for the night wouldn't he mm -hmm. but but they've decided to go actually you're, you're a fucking dick mate you're a fucking dick i mean there's a chance you're a clumsy that... motherfucker there's a chance that alfie and linda get together when he's back there anyways it's always a chance and then um, mick walks in and goes how fucking dare you mate? unless they uh how... Unless they decide to do the thing that most soaps do, and it's actually a long con, and Alfie's going to get back with Cat, and uh, Cat's going to, and Phil's going to get with Sharon again, because soaps do like oh, to do no. this long-winded nonsense. But regardless, what else has Elaine done? She kind of started prodding around the Panasars to figure out that they were uh, like that they caused the break-in at the Vic, and also her and linda had a bit more of a poignant scene uh she was still very overbearing and like stepping on, Lind on linda's toes but she finally lists uh elaine finally went listener i i know that you're struggling but like don't you forget how much mick did for me 
you know, I'm not just forgetting that he was there, even if I haven't talked to him. He was, I mean, I think she said he was there when Linda's dad died, and, like, he really helped her through it, so. It was, it was nice to see a bit more, but ultimately, it's it's been fun to see Linda be that, like, kid again. <laughs> Because she just she just she just has to react to what Elaine does and just be like, oh for fuck's mum. No. <laughs> it's been a little fun dynamic. And I suppose the final piece is she is just desperately waiting for George to get here with his family. So how have you found Elaine this week, Piggy? Do you think the reception she's been given is warranted? No. <laughs> um, I don't mind Elaine. I do think she's a bit of a dick, but I'm not one of the car. I'm not one of the people who are like, you win, win, Peggy. She's Peggy. I'm like, Barbara Winstar is dead. Get the fuck over it. She's fucking dead. Barbara Winstar is six foot dead in a coffin. I don't think Barbara Winstar gives a fuck. She is dead. Unless she's somehow going to do what Chris Benoit did where he kidnapped a child even though he'd been dead for 16 years. I don't think Barbara Winstar is going to come back from the grave and fucking be like, How dare you, mate, steal my character. I don't think she cares. She had dementia. I bet she barely remembered being on the show. So, for people who say she's Peggy Mitchell, I bet Barbara Winstar, I bet Phil Mitchell, or whatever Phil's character is called, and they, whatever his name is in real life. I bet the, I bet Ross Ken, who played Grant Mitch, I bet they don't care. Like, just get over it. Peggy's dead. If Peggy was still on the show, I could see a point. But Peggy hasn't been on the show in seven years. Phil even confirmed it this week. He went, well, Peggy's dead for seven years. The only mention that Peggy has on the square is the fact there's a pub named after her. But even then, she's not in the pub haunting it going, get out of my place. Just let it play out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I hate this uproar that we have to compare characters to past characters. Yeah. Fair enough. Sorry, Barbara Winstar. I, know, I yeah. know you're I know. I know you're watching this, but uh... got, a, a, got a, a little bit niche in the middle there. Bit a bit of a long winded reference. I... And a bit harsh. She is dead. Um, <laughs> maybe let's not make jokes about her. But regardless, the point still stands. Stop comparing new characters to old characters. Because fundamentally, there can only ever really be one if you're a truly iconic character. There can only be one Peggy Mitch. There can only be one Pat Butcher. There can only be one Frank there Butcher. There can only be one Reese. <laughs> exactly. So just let it play out before you immediately decide that you hate them. Because you're not supposed to like her at the minute. You genuinely aren't. She's come into Linda's life out of nowhere. She's uh, got in the way of her, of Linda and Sharon. And now she's being really overbearing towards Linda's life and causing her problems. You're not supposed to like her. She's also like having a secret. She's hiding stuff from Linda as well. She's not supposed to be likable. She was bullying Alfie. It's just, you gotta let it play out. So all characters need to be introduced with somewhat of like a pretty, it has to be something fairly remarkable. You bring them in, they do something big, and then slowly through time, you get a bit more endeared to them. Who who would have thought when you brought Lola in that about 10 years on, you would have been like, man, I am genuinely going to miss the character. You fucking didn't because she was some random chav who stole Abby's phone. So moral is, just let it Get play over out, please. Really <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Go Lola. Go John Ryan. I use Reddit for horniness. <laughs> and that's when you should give your first plan. Exactly. Um, and I suppose now it's time for the little bit of a halftime break before we get into the really sad stuff of the week, being Lola's cancer struggles and then the two-hander. But then let's go ahead and do the old discussions and how are we all doing.
how was your holiday this week? Of course, yeah. for people who don't know, a friend came over and stayed with them. They're not friends with benefits. They're just friends, I promise. Yeah, um, it's, it's no okay to that. have a platonic friendship with a woman. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Well, we it, don't... We, they were doing footage for their secret cans. Don't <laughs> worry about it. They're only friends. Um, but yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice because obviously meeting people online and then actually you're like... I don't know about you, but meeting people online feels completely different because I can never truly feel like I... Basically, I can send about 10 messages. I'll remember like one of them. But you have like a face-to-face -face conversation. You're probably going to remember a little bit more. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, mentally, my brain just forgets half the stuff. And it was, it was cool. It was a very chill vibe. It was fun to... You know, now they might show up in some dreams in physical form. Uh, now I can just be like having a dream where I'm having like the best day ever and they're going to be like, what are you doing, you fucking lunatic? And I'm like, ah, oh, you're ruining everything, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, it was... It was are you doing him? It was a good I'm time. I'm not in a friendship way. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was a good time. Uh, how was your week? Well, before I get into the horribly... Review of Fast 10. <laughs> I tell you, it was some dog shit. <laughs> it was. Um, I had a pretty good week. I got a few more TNA Marvels that arrived. Um, shout out Shark Boy. Um, my, my TNA parcel basically arrived. And I got all my TNA figures. So it was a pretty good week. Um, nice. I nearly cried like a bitch when Lola's episode aired this week. Yeah, I really too. want to know the name of that song. Because I, I like the song. Yeah, it was a cool song. It's, a, it's an actual song and I know it, but I forget the name of it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just called You Look Wonderful Tonight. I don't remember who it's by, but it was pretty cool. I'll, I'll do some. <laughs> Imagine it was. Yeah, what, Imagine uh, Wonderful by Tonight. <laughs> wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapp. Imagine it was just by a nonce and the BBC were like, oh shit. It's by Jay Brown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just for quickly reckoning it. Yeah. Well, yeah. My week was my my week was wonderful, I guess. Um. Uh. My, if we can get the ten seconds of Julia's theme for Piggy's granny, it's her birthday today, so. Yeah, 10 seconds to Julia's thing. No picture of her though. We'll just put a text message. But yeah, on to my Fast and Furious 10 review. Right. I, 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 was saying, I was saying this to my dad yesterday. The Fast and Furious franchise has gone about fast cars to... <laughs> the steel... Like, my prime example is Fast and Furious 1 is about these street racer thugs. Yeah. Which is Dominic Toretto or Finn Diesel. I'll refer to them by actors because Ash doesn't watch the, the franchise. Exactly. If you watch the franchise, I'll refer to them by their characters' names, but I don't want to confuse them. And basically, Fast Five, because Fast Five is referenced a lot throughout Fast 10, and I'm not spoiling that. It's pretty well known yeah. that that's basically Fast 10. Fast Five, they basically steal a, is it a, fold? They steal a safe full of money. And it is, I don't know if you've ever seen this scene in Fast Five where they're driving down the bridge and they both have the fault and it's just wrecking everything. But um, basically, it's just setting up Fast Eleven, yeah. which I didn't like. It just it's basically like find out what happened to Dominic's son in the next film. And you're like, oh, god. <laughs> Sound. Yeah. And obviously I'd that. I'm much rather be four hours. I would have much rather the film be four hours and you get everything sorted and it'd be mm. two hours and like well you see we tingled your balls but what if you want to finish on yet that you'll have to wait two years now for mm. us to finish <laughs> i just can't get over to you on seeing it when i left you through the floor no more sprawling oh, well. bloody half the podcast being fast and furious are sorry. you done sorry 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't there stop we laughing. Are. I've been doing so well. Well, you better stop laughing. Because now it's the time of the podcast. We talk about the uh, arguably most uh, important storyline of the week, where we talk about Lola's cancer struggle as the treatment has stopped working. So this week, Lola has a karaoke party that Kim has organized. Uh, they didn't actually get a karaoke machine, but don't you worry, Elaine was there and she was prepared. Uh, but at the party, you can tell that Lola's feeling pretty dodgy and she's just kind of realized that she's going to die. A, a little bit into the party, she starts to get really disoriented and starts to freak out and by the end of the night seemingly has like a seizure and desperately pleads for Billy to like help her like I can't die like this she's then taken into the hospital as Billy, Jay and Ben are there when they tell Lola that the treatment isn't working and she has weeks left to live and this kind of leads into Lola just asking Billy like I want you to help me end my life on my terms so asking to do, you know, asking to be the uh, dot to Ethel, you know, asking to help her end her life. Um, and Billy, Which... in... I'll just, we'll, we'll, I'll wrap this. Billy initially disagrees, yeah. but then agrees, but as long as she tells Jay. There we go. What are your thoughts? Which brings it on to a point for me is, if, if you're a loved one or a friend, or a family member were basically I'm not gonna say a dog because you can euthanize a dog, but if your family member was basically or your friend was in pain and the best thing to do is to kill them with morphine or however you do it, you basically turn off the machine. Would you do it? Is my question. Yes. <laughs> There's not really Because that much I think of a... it should be legal. Yeah, but the main issue when it comes to discussing that kind of thing is that people usually, like, people question when the right time is. Like, what would be the right time to sort to do this? Like, um, pain. you know, but that that's probably where, I don't know, There's I, I kind of have a bit of a dissonance uh, with the kind of like, all life is precious, because, you know, some life isn't precious <laughs> um like some people should probably just be better off dead than just alive existing um Jimmy <laughs> uh you know take it that what you will um so yeah i mean if you had the choice of like you are allowed to just end this person's suffering and it will like the main emotion they'll feel is just relief that it's over you can give someone that final like burst i'd happily do it it's like um i, I don't know if you've ever played the life is strange games yeah but there's yeah, basically yeah. an alternative it's like the alternative universe where max goes and sees chloe in a wheelchair yeah she's gone to a car crash and basically the decision you have to make in that universe is unhook the morphine or yeah. hook the morphine in and kill her or let her stay alive and be in pain. Yeah. That was the entire point. And I agree that it, it should be like a dog, basically, is what I agree. I'll always go to the term. It should be like an animal. If your animal's in pain, they should be put down. They shouldn't, the, the doctor shouldn't be like, well, actually, it's the dog's body, it's the dog's choice. You know, like the dog, his dick is hanging off, his leg is stiff, he's in pain, just kill him and they were like no no the dog has a life it's the dog's choice and you're like mate just shut up that's <laughs> the same thing with humans they're like actually it's the human's choice yeah the human wants to be put out of its miss no no but it's not what god wanted i don't care what god wanted god wouldn't want it to be in pain god yeah. would much rather you kill a person by injecting them with more it's not even illegal because you're not even physically killing them you're only inject they're only Opening the medicine to, yeah. to, to put them to sleep. You're not. You're not physically doing what Chris Benoit did and fucking grabbing them by the pill by the neck and going fucking tap or snap. You're just. You're just peacefully going goodbye, Granny. 
beep. Like, you, you know what I mean? You're not fucking stabbing them. Yeah. Like, you don't understand why they should... I mean, there's, there, there's just some, uh, some people who believe that all life is important, and I am not one yeah. who particularly agrees. But I suppose just the... Uh, I... Just wrap, wrap, wrap <laughs> this little point up, and we can continue discussing the East Enders story. Um, oh Jesus, someone fell. Yeah, I just basically think that all life does not matter because there is people who don't deserve life. There is people who abuse life. There is people who want people to burn and suffer. There is people killing trans people. There's people killing babies. There's fucking children in sweatshops. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't there's understand a lot of people who, are, who, who abuse life and probably don't deserve life themselves. Yeah, and then and, but then people will defend them going, but their life matters. Right, so, so let me put this into question. Jeffrey Dahmer, did he deserve a life? No, he didn't. He killed innocent men. Yep. And people will defend them and go, and actually he deserved life. No, he didn't. He deserved to be shot in the head, raped himself, and then fucking buried. He didn't because he hurt innocent people, so he should have been hurted for what he did to innocent people. Same with Savile, same with Glitter. Well, I don't know what you do with Glitter because because he just raped children, so I don't know how you do that with Glitter. But anyway, you know what I mean. These people do not deserve lives, but you would always defend them and go, "They do deserve life," and I'm like, "No, they don't." People who hurt other people, the wrong intentions, do not deserve life. They deserve death or to be treated the way they were treated. And they hurt the person they hurt it and to bring it out to the other side people who will just be suffering uh through no fault of their own should probably be able to make the decision to pull the plug when they can't really see <laughs> like an end in sight and it was a really i i don't really like billy much as a character but seeing billy upset hurts man <laughs> like <laughs> billy Billy is somewhat of a tragic character and that pretty much everything in his life has been garbage. Um, but Lola's one person he can be truly proud of. Um, she's a good mum and she's 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 cares for her family. Um, so seeing like Billy just like oh, I don't really want to do this, I can't, I can't do that, I can't <laughs> But then to kinda go, yeah, but you have to tell Jay is pretty good it was a it was very poignant very sad scenes i like the little touch where you can see billy just tell honey like through the window where it wasn't actually like spoken but just emotion you could just tell that she'd been told um but yeah anything else to say about this little uh ramp up to the two-hander episode um because I'll always compare it to my nanny it is uh, it is very hard for me to watch because unlike <laughs> I know it might sound stupid but unlike Lola my nanny did not have a like because Lola is essentially just a fictional character the yeah. extended writers can go you're dying today yeah and then the actors be like alright I'm dying today yeah but like in real life you don't you know the person who's in pain, you don't know when the final day is coming. It's yeah. not like you can go, Dear God, please kill my nanny on the 25th of May, <laughs> 2005. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It's, out, it's completely so, out, out of the end. Yeah. So, um, I do love the fact that Lola, I know we'll bring up it in a few minutes, I do love how Lola got a, like a final happy day, but I just wish she died on the beach. Because to me, that would be more emotional. Just they're having this happy day, and then she's like, Jay, Jay, I'm seeing the light of God. I'm seeing the light. Yeah. Did. Yeah. But that's just me. I would, it would have been an interesting way to do it. I think, I don't think, I don't, I, I feel like basically they would have done it, but the last person who died from cancer on the show was uh, uh, Daniel, which was Jean's like. I think husbands, kind of, maybe, but well, like they were in a relationship, and you know, they he, he just like casually died, like on a bench, like they were just chatting on the bench, and he just died. And uh, yeah, it was 
it was pretty impactful but yeah i suppose before we get truly into the beach episode which we do want to give as much like necessary time and like detail as it deserves so let's segue over to the two-hander margate episode featuring only jay and lola So the episode kicks off with Lola waking up from a nightmare. She's in Margate and she's she's ready to tell Jay that she wants to end her life and she wants like she wants Billy to help her. But she just can't see him. Like he's he's just not there. And essentially they slowly decide that they're gonna head to Margate themselves and just kind of adventure around. They they go to an arcade where they kind of they nearly get a unicorn, but Jay just kind of like smacks the machine to get it out properly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love the fact that it was on the air. Like I was thinking to myself, how many scenes did it take to get that right on the edge? <laughs> um, I bet because I like to imagine that whoever plays Jay, yeah, yeah like they they, like they, they didn't the... place it. They just they just they yeah. had to get it perfect. Yeah, I'm imagining like like they're like doing takes of like take <laughs> one, and then then it's like take one hundred, and he's just sat there like, oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> 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 they're on like take nine hundred. They haven't filmed anything else for the day, and he's just sat there like I want to turn up and myself. <laughs> taught me out of my misery, and Lola's like, I'm glad I'm dying. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he's just like fuck sake, this fucking machine. <laughs> I, mean, to be fair, I, I once got a uh, I once got a little like football at one of those machines. Ooh, Nothing. Haven't seen. I got a, I got a Peter Griffin out of a machine. So. <laughs> nice. Hey, um, Lois, I'm Lola. But yeah, and suppose continuing on, they also go to a, a roller rink and. Lola feels pretty awful with regret for the things she hasn't done with Lexi and the things that she won't be able to do. And this kind of coincides with uh, Billy also being like, have you told Jay? You need to tell him. And she tries to approach the subject, but he doesn't really want to talk about it. Uh, there was also a throwback scene uh, because I'm pretty sure the first line they shared is, do you, do you, want, to, do, do you want to share a sausage or something? Some weird line. Um, they 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 made a reference to that, which was nice. It's kind of all gone full circle. Um, and it starts it starts to get rough. It starts to get really really rough because we learn that Jay's been learning to play the guitar and wants to play a song for Lola as a way to talk about his feelings. And Jay does a brilliant cover of "You Look Wonderful Tonight." by Eric Clapton, as we cut through them having the best time. Um, I brought this up to Ash off the podcast, but I'd love if Jay grabbed the guitar and went, Lola, I don't know if you've heard of this low-key band called Oasis, <laughs> but they had a couple of... Today is going to be the day. It's going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. <laughs> nah, they, they did like, pick um, a... They picked a really, like... I mean, first and foremost, uh, the actor did did a great job of actually singing it with like a lot of art and emotion. They did. Um, like, it, it, it's very hard for me to separate the character from the artist. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But like, when you're watching Jay and Lola, it actually feels like you're watching two real life people. Yeah. And not just like someone going, "Okay, what's my line?" Yeah. Alfie, you're a bitch. <laughs> and like, oh. Yeah. All right. No, they really they they have such a good chemistry that you could genuinely imagine them like as real people. Um, and I suppose yeah, I I think it's just if there's one scene to seek out, seek out the seek out the song, like seek seek out this scene. It's really good stuff. Well, actually, this whole episode really, it's just it's some probably the best EastEnders of the whole year so far. Um. And honestly, that's been quite hard, like, this year as well. There's been a lot of good episodes. Um, but to get a little bit darker, uh, then she finally tells Jay, like, listen, all right, I, I want to die, and I want I want Billy to help me. And he gets upset and pretty, pretty angry. Not because of her, because of how unfair the whole situation is. 
Jay talks about how he looks to the future and feels like it's all being taken away. Um, and they kind of like, they slowly get, they get past it a little bit. Jay apologizes and then goes, listen, all right, if you're going to do this, I want it to be me. Like, I want to help you. But they're also interrupted as <laughs> the police arrive as earlier Lola stole a necklace that she wanted to get for Lexi's birthday. <laughs> And Jay essentially goes, hey, pass it to me. I'll get arrested. Be fine. In the police station, whilst Jay is in custody, Lola finally realizes that she's dying. And, you know, they then, like, they, they get off from the police. They keep the necklace. And they get back to the hostel where Lola kind of talks to Lexi, who's asking after Jay. And Lola's, like, feels slightly sad, but also quite relieved that, like, Lexi does kind of think of Jay as this, like, dad figure. Well, no offense, your dad's been mentioned before. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, you cling on to literally anybody else. Um, I, I would much rather cling on to a list called Rock <laughs> than fucking Ben Mitchell. He is not the uh, pillar of consistency, long. but that's for sure. But yeah, and in the final scenes of the episode, Lola starts to think about what would happen if Jay actually helps her die, but she's decided that she isn't going to let herself die. She is prepared to die naturally because she wants to be brave for Lexi. And we then repeat Lola's dream where she's calling for Jay and he arrives as You Look Wonderful Tonight plays. As they kiss and they run through the shore, all through the waves, as we pan out as the episode ends. Hoy they missed something there. Hmm? I wish they didn't do the duff, 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 duff. I wish they just left and you look wonderful tonight play over the credits. Yeah. So like you see them on the beach. Yeah, but I they're feel like they're probably gonna play it. Other. I feel like they're probably gonna play it at the death if they like know how, you know? Maybe it'll be like yeah. Jay will like be singing it, just like sobbing, and it'll like fade to black. I hope she gets Julia's theme though. Maybe she'll get that for the funeral. Maybe, yeah, maybe she'll get Julia's theme. Maybe she'll get an actual like. Uh, nah, I don't think they'll give her like. I, you know, how Mick got his own theme. I don't yeah. think she'll get her own theme. I she, think she will just get Julia's theme. She um, might get her. You look wonderful tonight. I, it would be good to see. It would be really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, Obviously. I suppose uh, let's just do a kind of brief little thoughts on the episode as a whole. Uh, how? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. How did you find it? Um, again, as I was going to say, obviously we know Spider again, even though I did Spider Fast and Furious. Obviously we know that Lawless final week in the square is coming up week and a half basically yeah this, this week is our final week in the square um obviously in real life you can't predict when someone's real life is just gonna end but um yeah it, it's pretty emotional to see i wish they played it next friday instead you instead of her being in the hospital she like jay I had a wonderful dream and then they go to the beach and she goes back home yeah and then it dies on the Wednesday, but I didn't mind it. Um, I do think it's one of the best episodes because I'm a pretty emotional person when it comes to TV shows and stuff. Not many shows can make me cry. Yeah. The, the only thing that probably made me cry in a TV show would be uh, what would make me cry in a TV show. There, there was something that made me cry. She Hulk working. No, She Hulk fucking <laughs> Daredevil made me cry. Cause uh, that's my boy. Uh, Only I can fuck Daredevil. Uh, and that Charlie Cox, you're a handsome man. You should be on extenders. <laughs> I suppose you should play Lola. I suppose the kind of juxtaposes. I'm also like the opposite. I usually be very emotionally stunted, but like, get me a soap storyline, I will cry. Like most of the characters who die, I will cry at if I cared about them. Like um. I think there's a lot of merit as to the writing of EastEnders of this storyline. Because not to 
I'm not saying the writers are overachieving, but there's also a storyline currently going on in Hollyoaks, where a character called Juliet Nightingale is also, like, also has cancer, and it has been revealed that it is terminal. But it feels like they haven't earned the exit. Like, it came out of nowhere, they've had a long, drawn-out storyline, but it's kind of it's kind of gone really, really fast. Um... But it doesn't feel as important as Lola's death is going to be. Um, and it's kind of a shame that they haven't managed to... Basically, I'm not saying this, this storyline is going to help the soap possibly win a bunch of soap awards at the end of the year or whenever it's like done. But this episode will definitely be up there and will definitely will probably win because it's such a good episode and it's so nice to have like two characters who i feel like everybody kind of like loves just as a whole like you can never hate jay you can never really hate lola and like together there's something just beautiful yet really tragic i think it's just really important to have given it the necessary time that it deserved and everything about this episode was wholesome, but like I said, also very sad and tragic at the same time. So, I can just, I suppose just without any doubt, I can just say this is the best episode of the year so far. And probably the best episode they've done in years. So. I'd agree with that. Um... Like, I don't have any other episode that, like, stands out to me so much. But it's just... Yeah, sure, they did the storyline because they decided that Lola's character had run its course. But fundamentally, they allowed all of the actors and actresses to truly depict what losing a family member in this fashion is like. And that's really important and really key. But yeah, um, <laughs> that has been all of our major storylines of the week and our slightly late uh, weekly podcast over EastEnders. Before we end the show, do we want to do any of the awards or just simply leave it like this and have it be strong? And um, I will give one award out to the most wooden actor. Um, the most wooden actor this week was the guitar. They were beautiful. So. <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah, and I suppose that should really be it for the week. Uh, simply said, watch Friday's episode for sure. It was truly a good episode. And yeah, it nearly made me cry. And sometimes that's easy, sometimes it's hard. But this time it was well deserved. There was, there's nothing cheap about Lola's death. And it is truly hitting a lot of people in the, like, truly hitting them properly. And they've truly done some great work. But, <laughs> um, do we have anything to avoid all doom and gloom this week? Well, we do, kind of, in a slightly twisted way, as we will be reacting uh, on a live stream on the Watching Wolf channel to Lola's death. And we will be giving our opinions and live reactions to see how it is. Do you want to see what I, Ash, look like and see my lovely, lovely face? Or do you want to see two people who have very much enjoyed the storyline actually see it come to a close? I have been Ash from Watching Wolford and I've been joined by Piggy. I've been Piggy from Jay's Guitar and I feel like to end this I will read out the lyrics to You Look Wonderful Tonight as, uh, as the credits roll, if that's alright. And um, it's late in the evening, she's wondering what clothes to wear. She puts on her makeup and brushes her long blonde hair. And then she asks me, do I look all right? And I say, yes, you look wonderful tonight. <laughs> <laughs>